Hey there, Adam from Splendid Sports. On this channel and podcast, I like to show cards, talk about cards, and also give my opinions on things in the industry where I, I think I can uh, add maybe something to the conversation. So I want to give a couple opinions on SGC grading. I've changed my mind on something with them very recently because of my latest order that I received back. I've uh, always been a big proponent of SGC grading. Uh, you know, I've started grading with them last year and I've graded, I don't know, probably at least a couple hundred cards with them at this point. Uh, so always been a big fan of how they operate and how they grade. You know, a lot of the things that you hear, they have a great reputation and I agree with it. Uh, so on this one though, I, I wanna give a couple thoughts first before I show these cards. There's eight graded SGC cards here in this package, tuxedo time, baby. And the first seven have all one thing in common. They are relic cards, relic cards of well-known players that I collect. Uh, and they're just, you know, I don't, I don't like to compliment my cards too much, but they're awesome. I love relic cards. I love vintage cards. I love junk, junk wax era cards. Uh, I collect baseball, basketball, football. I collect a lot of things, uh, but I have to admit, I love relic cards. I, I just love the idea of them. I love how they look. I just think they're really cool. And uh, the first seven here that you're gonna see are some of the best ones that I've ever bought. I, I bought all of these cards raw. So they're all raw cards that I bought myself and got them graded. Now, here's the thing. I So I had graded a lot of cards, like I said, with SGC last year, earlier this year, but I really had taken uh, at least a few months off of grading. And partly because I just, I just felt like the prices were a little high still, 30 bucks a card for SGC, PSA is at 30 bucks a card. And so my, and I think I might've even said this on social media in a, in a few posts, but up until I changed my mind here, I felt like 30 bucks a card was, was too high for SGC. I just, I was like, you know, PSA is lower in their prices. They're down to 30 bucks a card. I know PSA just had that special for 18, but that was a kind of a one-off thing. But as of now, they're at 30 bucks a card for cards that are valued at $499 and less. So they're 30 bucks a card for a lot of cards. SGC is way more flexible with that. So they're 30 bucks a card, but they go, their values go way up. So I think you can grade cards that are, you know, 1500 bucks or less or something like that. But they draw the line, in my opinion, much better. You know, they make it make it a easier process where you don't have to go to a different level if it's above 499, stuff like that. So they're both, they're the same price right now. And, and I, up until recently, I was, you know, thinking, hey, SGC really should lower prices. They can't be the same price as PSA, or even God forbid, if they're more expensive than PSA, they're gonna, you know, it's, it's not a good move. But I thought about it more, and especially after I had this submission come back. So I submitted these, uh, the, fir there's, the first five cards were all one submission. The next two were from a previous one, but this five card submission that, uh, the first five cards I'm gonna show, I submitted, submitted these cards and a day later, now I don't live in Florida, I live in Arizona. I submitted these cards and they went to Florida. I got an email the next day. I think it was the next day, maybe if at most two days later. But it was at most two days later, I got an email saying my cards were received and they graded my cards. Uh, it was a weekend that went by, so it's not a business day, but they basically graded my cards in two business days. And these are relic cards. So my, my assumption is they're a little, probably a little more difficult to grade. There's more things you have to look at because they're thicker cards and they have patches and game use stuff on them. And I got them back less than a week from when I sent them off. I was, I was, I had heard this. I had heard that they are laser fast on uh, getting cards back to people right now. And so it just kind of just had this epiphany that I was thinking, no, you know what? SGC is building their own lane. Why do they have to compete with PSA, the behemoth in the industry? It would be a crazy move to try to be a race to the bottom on price because they're probably never going to be able to, in the long run, compete on price. PSA, they're building new offices, hiring all these people. They're scaling so that they can offer the, you know, the $10 grading again, probably when you submit a certain amount. So, uh, you know, at first thought I was like, well, SGC, they need to, you know, follow that along and, and, and also lower prices a lot more. And maybe in the future, but right now, here's my thinking. SGC is 
creating a brand for themselves. They're, they're, if you think about these other grading companies, you know, the idea is be known for something. Uh, you think, so I, I thought, all right, maybe I, I even considered Beckett to send these cards to. I went to the Beckett website and it just felt like there's all these things and the process and it just felt like it was, I don't have a lot of time when it, to submit these cards, right? So I'm looking for ease of use. How easy is it to do business with your company? I looked at CSG. I love their quality of their slabs and everything. I think they're doing a good job. I considered it. I, th I, th I thought, hey, these relic cards would look good in those CSG slabs. Went to the website. There was all these stipulations. If you want this, it's this extra. And it was just like I said, you know, forget it. So I went to SGC, boom, they're straight to the point. 30 bucks a card, almost regardless of what it's worth, unless you're getting real crazy with values. But for just about most cards, you send them in, it's 30 bucks a card, and they're getting it back in a week. So I was thinking, why should they be a lower price or even the same price in the long run as PSA? PSA, in my opinion, I don't care how many offices they open, how many people they hire, I don't ever see them at their lowest price point being able to return cards in a time period like SGC is right now. So SGC has a competitive advantage. Now, if they try to go the PSA route, right? And let's you know make the prices a lot lower. Let's hire all these extra people. There, I think it's a losing proposition. And I didn't, it didn't hit my head at first, but now I totally see it. I think SGC, I, I guess this is their, their move, right? Is, is doing, is being the, the company that's known for customer service, great communication and fast turnaround times. And most importantly, accurate grading, accurate and fair grading. That's one of the reasons why I didn't also want to send these relic cards to PSA. It's because I have graded relic cards with them in the past and the grades are all over the map. They grade, I, I don't understand some of the, I've gotten grades that are, you know, fives and sixes and sevens and eights and all over the map and all the cards look the same. I don't know how they grade these relic thicker cards. I know they grade them stricter, but uh, you know, it, for me, it's, I just want to get what, what the fair grade is and have confidence. I don't have confidence. And, you know, and one of the reasons why I don't have confidence in grading with PSA right now, and it's really in a way not their fault, but because they have so much volume, they've had to hire, I'm guessing, all these people to grade cards that probably aren't trained enough or are just kind of thrown into the mix too fast. There's people grading these cards that are not experienced. I mean, there's there's collectors on YouTube that could do a way better job of grading cards than probably the people PSA has had to hire. And it's just the business situation they've been put into. If they want to keep up with demand, they have to get more people. And I just don't feel comfortable with sending my cards to a company that's uh, just doing that much volume and, and hiring that many new people to grade these cards. I, I'm sure SGC has increased their graders, but I feel like they've probably done it in a way that's sustainable. They probably have a better training setup because they don't have as many people to train. So it's, it's probably just a better process. That's my, my thinking is. And so I feel more confident in many ways with SGC. The, the final point though is, yeah, I think SGC is doing a great job of, of building a lane in grading. And whether they're ever the number one company as far as number of cards graded, who cares? You know, if I'm running SGC, more I thought of it, I don't want to be the leader in the, in the number of cards graded. And you know what? You can't control resale values. That's out of your hands. All you can do is build a brand. And that's what they're doing. They're being known for those things I mentioned. And there's, I think there's going to be people will be willing to pay PSA level prices or who knows, maybe even a little more. If you could send your cards in and get them back in a week and, and they're properly graded and everything is just done right and they're a well-oiled machine. So that, that's, in my opinion, the way to go. I don't think the goal is let's, let's never grade as many cards as PSA does in a month. Let's always be number two or number three or whatever. That doesn't matter. What matters is are we building brand loyalty with customers? And I'll tell you what, with this order, they did. And it has nothing to do with uh, did I get high grades or anything like that. It was just the feel and the process. And it's just easy to do business with them. I've talked long enough on that. Let's show these cards. Like I said, the first five cards I'm gonna show here are cards that I submitted in, the, in this last order that I was talking about. The, the next two are also Rollick cards, but I graded them back uh, a few months back, but I felt like it would make sense to show them together because they're all Rollick cards. 
Um, and the last card is a special card. It's not a relic card, but I'll explain why I wanted to show that too. But it is graded by SGC. First card. This card was purchased from Ryan Nolan, breakout cards, months back. Just never graded it. Finally said I'm going to grade it. This is, I love this card. It got a uh, it's it got a, a nine mint nine, 2006 upper deck epic Jackie Robinson game used bat, numbered to 15. Just a beautiful card. Upper deck, love upper deck. Uh, and uh, this, as you'll see in all these relic cards, game used, game worn, all this new stuff where it's never worn or never even looked at by the the player. I don't get it. So these are real relic cards, cards that were actually worn and used by the player in a game. So this is a game used bat, got the mint nine. And this card is just, look at that. I love vintage cards. That's those are my favorite, always will be. But I gotta admit, some of these new cards are, I mean, this is 2006, so it's not real new, but compared to vintage, it's new. I mean, it's just outstanding card. Got a good deal on it from Ryan, as always. And this baby is going up on the wall, baby. Next card. I mentioned I collect not just baseball, but I collect Tom Brady. This is a 2004 Leaf Certified Materials. Uh, got an eight. Mirror white material numbered to 250. Game use patch. Look at that. And look on the back. It's numbered to... Number to 250, like I said. Uh, but yeah, any any, uh, any type of game used anything from Tom Brady, I'm all in. And, uh, you know, with these relic cards, for me, it's kind of like vintage cards where I don't really care about the number grade that much. It's more of how the card looks because these are display cards. I'm going to put these cards up on my wall, game used stuff. I mean, these are cards that I think cross over to, to even people who aren't card collectors. You know, when you invite your friends over and you show them cards that they're cards, but they're also relic cards, game used stuff from Tom Brady or Jackie Robinson, any any sports fan is going to find those really cool. I know I do. All right, next card. I also collect basketball and Larry Bird's my guy. Being from Massachusetts, you probably understand why Tom Brady and Larry Bird are my guys. All right, this is a, I love this card. 2009 Panini Hall of Fame Basketball Dream Team material. The greatest basketball team ever assembled. Numbered to 975, this got an 8.5. This is a game used patch. Yeah, just a white patch, but hey, it's still worn by Larry Bird on the Dream Team. The, the greatest team ever assembled, 92 Dream Team. Awesome card. Next card, another Tom Brady. 2004, Fleer Platinum. Platinum material, authentic game-worn jersey patch, 8.5. I love Fleer cards. Piece of memorabilia noted on the front of this card was used in an official NFL game by Tom Brady, quarterback of the New England Patriots. So you young guys who are out there buying these Relic cards that aren't relics, that were never worn or used by the player. I, I mean, you do what you want, but when there's this type of stuff out there from the past that are honestly, in a lot of cases, less expensive than the stuff that's coming out now, I know what I'm buying all day, this stuff. All right. And like I said, grades don't matter on these to me that much, but hey, if I can get a 10 like on this card, that's cool. A 10 on a thick relic card like this, uh, I don't expect it, but I will take it. 2015 Panini Spectra, Larry Bird, Game Time Materials, Green Prism, this one's number to five, number four of five, got the SGC Gem Mint 10. Check out the patch on this one. Some patches are definitely more impressive than others. That's a Larry Bird game use patch. And obviously you can see it's got the lettering or can't tell what, what it what letter or even maybe a number, but it's part of the part of that piece of the jersey, two colors. Awesome looking. This baby's going up on the wall. There's the back. 
All right. And now these next two, I didn't get, I graded them a few months back, but they were graded by SGC. I bought them raw. Figured I'd include them here. Look at this. Show that first. 2001 Upper Deck SP Legendary Cuts. Shoeless Joe Jackson debut bat card. Got a mint nine. Look at this. This is a piece of a bat. Let's look on the back here. Congratulations. You've received a game used bat for Shoeless Joe Jackson, an official Major League Baseball game. We hope you enjoy, and I will. I certainly will. Unbelievable. I mean, I don't know. To me, again, vintage cards are my favorite. I love them. But to have a card, I don't care when it was made, if it was 2001, 2021, if it's got a game used bat piece from Shoeless Joe Jackson, man, that's cool. Love it. Look at this next one. This is the last relic card. Whew. Oh man. 2020 Panini National Treasures. Babe Ruth. Numbered to 10. Got an 8.5 from SGC. Look at that. Yeah, it's not a uh, three or four color patch. They didn't have those. Look at his uniform. But, and again, it's not, a, it's a Panini card for baseball, but who cares? This is a game. Look at the back. This is game-worn used material of Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth game used. Wow. Love it. I got this one uh, from, I think it was Hive Cards on Twitter. So again, uh, I'm not a big social media guy. I don't really enjoy it that much. But it is, honestly, it can be a good place to buy some cards if you get it in the right uh, threads and connections you can find some really good deals this card was i mean for a babe ruth i know it's 2020 okay it's not a vintage card but it's got a game use relic piece from babe ruth on it and uh i don't love talking prices all the time but yeah this card was i think it was a few hundred bucks raw so not cheap but for me and again i don't care about the grade but it's a game used worn material from babe ruth that's awesome not for sale. All right, last card. This is not a relic card, but I wanted to show it because it's in the SGC theme. And one of the newest things that I love about SGC is that they now, on an authentic card, they don't just put A, they put, they put authentic. And so this card, this is a 1961 new card, baseball scoops, Mickey Mantle hits longest home run, number 422. Always love this card. This one's extra special, very, very special card to me. Uh, and there's a reason why I didn't even want an assigned grade. So I, when I submitted this card, this is something if you guys don't do a lot of grading, you have the option where if you wanna submit the card and just authenticate it, just have authentic on it to show, show that it's an authentic card with no grade, you can. You just have to select a box and say, I don't wanna grade, just authenticate. It's the same price, 30 bucks. But I'll give you the reason why. This is a card that was my late uncle's. I'm gonna do a special video on, uh, I have other cards from his, um, and I wanna tell the full story on that video. But for, for this one, he's an uncle I never met. Uh, he died very young, tragically, never got a chance to, uh, to meet him, but I did receive some of his cards. And so this is one that was uh, in the box of cards that was given to me that he collected when he was a, a kid. And so for this, I just wanted it in a slab for protection purposes, for display, for all the reasons aside from grade. I honestly don't care what the grade is. Even if it would have gotten a 10, which it wouldn't have, I don't care. It, the, the grade does honestly, doesn't matter one bit to me. What matters is having this card in a uh, secure case and uh, just nice piece that I can display and look at. Uh, so all I want is authentic. I know the card's authentic. I know it came from my uncle who collected this card in the, you know, in the early 60s before he passed away. Uh, so again, not a card I'm ever going to sell. I don't care what the authentic does to the resale values because it's never getting sold. Uh, so that, uh, I, I think it's a great improvement because before I don't, 
you know, I don't love the A they had on there because uh, it kind of looks like, oh, it could be altered or there could be, this is an authentic card. It's not altered. It's just authenticated. That's it. It's a, it's a real, real deal. It's a real version. And so I think as a larger point before I end this, uh, this is an example of why I love SGC. This is a new change they made and it's a change for collectors. It's not a, it's not a money play. It's not something they're going to probably make extra money on. Uh, maybe, maybe people will grade more cards like this uh, that they don't want to sell. They just want to authenticate it. But more than anything, they listen to collectors. This is something that collectors have been saying for a long time, I think. And SGC, they listen to their customers and potential customers. And they said, let's do it. Let's make a change that, uh, you know, is going to help the collector. It's something that they want. So they listen. Uh, I don't know if PSA either. I mean, I'm sure they listen, but they're so big that I feel like they, they just have a harder time making changes, uh, making improvements because they're just huge. They're gigantic. Uh, so whereas SGC is that, you know, uh, PSA is the Titanic out there that takes forever to turn around, right? Or make a, make a change in direction. Whereas SGC is just this, the speedboat that's out there and could turn on a dime. And uh, I think that's the route they got to take and they'll be very, very successful. I know I'll be a customer for a long time if they just continue on with what they're doing. So that's it. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I will be back soon.